Hi everyone! Welcome to my YouTube channel. While exploring and building inverter circuits to convert DC to AC, I've tried many different approaches, including the popular EGS002 base design. Although it's capable of generating a pure sine wave, it's not very beginner friendly. Creating the output inductor requires technical skills, suitable components are hard to source, and the EGS002 board itself isn't always available, not to mention its relatively high cost. All of this can be discouraging, especially for newcomers. That's why, in today's video, I'll be sharing a much simpler solution, an H-bridge inverter circuit that uses common, easy-to-find components. It's easy to assemble, cost-effective, and suitable for practical uses such as powering fans, lights, and other basic appliances. While it doesn't generate a pure sine wave like EGS002, it works reliably for non-sensitive loads. Let's dive into the circuit operation, schematic, and assembly process together. Now, I'll perform a real-world load test for this circuit. I'm using an AC light bulb to test the output. When one connect the circuit and power it up, I use a multimeter to measure the output voltage, and it reads around 150 volts AC, which confirms the circuit is working as intended. I'll also turn the light bulb on and off several times so you can clearly see that the circuit is functioning in real time with no tricks or editing involved. The goal here is to show that the circuit is stable and reliable enough for real world use, not just a theoretical test. After testing with the light bulb, I continued with an inductive load, an electric fan rated at around 50 watts. When I powered on the circuit, the fan ran smoothly, with no shaking or instability. This is an important test because inductive loads are generally harder to drive compared to resistive loads like a bulb. I also used a power meter to measure the consumption and it showed about 50 watts, which matches the fan's rated power. This confirms that the H-bridge inverter is stable and performs well even with real inductive loads. And before we dive deeper into the circuit, let's take a moment with a short video about my partner, JLCPCB. JLCPCB provides easy, affordable, and reliable PCB and PCBA solutions, empowering electronics engineers to develop projects efficiently. With 19 years of PCB manufacturing expertise since 2006, running five cutting-edge, in-house factories and serving over 5.48 million engineers in 180 countries and regions. Order PCBS from JLCPCB effortlessly, upload your Gerber file to get instant quote and order in minutes. It's as easy as online shopping. PCB customization, component sourcing, stencil manufacturing, and high-precision assembly all in one place. Get one to eight layer PCBS for just $2, efficient large-scale production reducing costs and bringing you unbeatable prices. Quality and lead time is reliable. All in-house production, ensuring quality stability and strict quality control in every process. Rapid turnaround, lightning fast PCB production in just 24 hours. Don't miss JLCPCB 6-Layer PCB Special. Get $30 off with a coupon and enjoy top quality 6-Layer PCBS for just $5. Plus, to you enig finish and no engineering fees for via and pad. Now I'll give you a brief overview of the circuit schematic. The circuit uses the SG35 to 5IC to generate a 50 Hz signal. That signal drives for MOSFET configured in an H-bridge, which converts DC into square wave AC. To control the high side MOSFET, I use bootstrap capacitors. These capacitors charge when the low side MOSFET is on, and then discharge to turn on the high side MOSFET. This allows all from MOSFET to be driven properly without the need for a dedicated gate driver. Once the schematic was complete, I designed a PCB layout for easier assembly. I'm sharing all design files, including the schematic and Gerber files, completely free, and you can download them from the video description below. 
After uploading my Gerber files to JLCPCB, I received the finished PCBS in just about a week. Let's open the box, eh? The boards are well packaged, clean, and precisely made, with no defects or smudges. The traces are sharp, holes are accurate, and everything's ready for easy soldering. I'm really happy with the quality, especially at such an affordable price. If you're making DIY circuits or prototypes, JLCPCB is easy to use, affordable to make, and reliable to trust. You can always count on JLCPCB. After assembling all the components, the circuit is now ready for testing. There are three main sections on the board. A terminal for 12 volts control power, used to power the IC and gate driver section. A terminal for high voltage DC input, typically from 150 volts to 300 volts depending on your application. And an output terminal, where you get the AC voltage to power your load. For the MOSFET, you should use high voltage rated types, such as IRF730, IRF740, IRF840, or IRF460, depending on your input voltage. Make sure to add heat sinks if you're driving higher power loads. Next, I supplied 13 volts to the circuit to power up the control section. On the oscilloscope, I noticed the initial frequency was around 80 Hz. I used the trimmer potentiometer on the board to fine-tune the output frequency. Depending on the country, the grid frequency is usually 60 Hz or 50 Hz, and I adjusted it to 50 Hz to match standard appliances. Here I have a mini inverter circuit that I introduced in a previous video. Its output provides a high voltage DC supply, which is suitable for powering this H-bridge circuit. Now, I'll connect the output of the mini inverter to the H-bridge and begin testing its operation. After connecting the high voltage source to the circuit, I used a multimeter to measure the AC output voltage. Currently, it's reading about 300 volts AC, which is a bit high. So I'll adjust the high voltage DC input to bring the output down to the standard to 150 volts AC, making it safer and more suitable for household appliances. So that wraps up the demo and testing of the DC to ACH bridge inverter using the SG35-5. to All schematic files, PCB layout, and design documents are shared for free in the video description. Feel free to download and try it out yourself. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so you won't miss future projects. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.